Hi, Mr. Causey here. In this question, we're given a formula P equals 2x plus 128 over x, and we're asked to find the minimum value of P. Now, the context where this formula arose was one of a sector with a given area having a radius of x, and P's the perimeter. And so we could say, therefore, that since x measures a length, then we know from the outset that x must be greater than 0. So that's worth noting for the future. So we're given a formula that involves x, and we're basically asked to find a minimum value of it. Now, remember when we're in a situation where we're looking at the graph, minimum values would occur at stationary points. So if in this case we're looking at a function called p, then we would find that minimum stationary point by setting the gradient equal to zero. So we will have to differentiate this expression, and yet it's not in a form that we can differentiate, because we're dividing by x here, this x to the power 1. It should be drifting up and joining 128, and the power 1 will become negative. Now we've got it in a form where we can differentiate and find the gradient formula, a formula that gives us the gradient anywhere on the graph. Differentiating 2x gives us 2. Differentiating this expression would bring the power down to the front, negative 1 times 128 times x, and then decrease the power, take 1 away from the power, so that would be negative 2. And let's tidy that up. 128, this x to the negative 2 drifts back down to the bottom of the fraction and changes sign back to positive. So 128 over x squared. And we can say for minimum value, we have to set p dashed x equal to 0. And that will find us a stationary point on the graph, which may be a minimum, it may be a maximum. We'll have to determine that. But certainly if we look for a minimum value, that's where we'll find it, at the solutions to this equation. So 2 minus 128 over x squared is equal to 0. Let's add 128 over x squared to both sides. Multiply both sides by x squared. Divide both sides by 2. And then square root both sides. Now at this stage, we'd have to declare that we know x is greater than 0. Um, x equals negative 8 is not a valid solution for the reason that we've already given. So x equals 8 is the only possibility. But does x equals 8 give us a minimum? Well, what we'll do is we'll have a look at values just less than 8. We'll look at 8. Well, we know uh, at 8 that the gradient has a value of 0. And then we'll look at, sorry, was that minus 1? That's just a negative. That means values of 8 just less than 8. And values just greater than 8. Put a little negative and a little positive there. This is a table of sign that we're making up. So to work out the gradient of p dashed of x, well, the values of p dashed of x just less than 8. Now remember, in our formula for p dashed of x, when we divide by 8 squared, that's 64, into 128, we get 2. We're taking away 2 from 2. But if I allow x to be slightly less than 8, this will be slightly less than 64, and it will go into 128 more times. So we'll be taking from 2 a number that's 
slightly bigger than 2. That'll be negative. And similarly, if we go to numbers bigger than 8, slightly bigger than 8, this will be slightly more than 64, and it'll go to 128, slightly less than twice. So we'll get 2 minus a number that's slightly less than 2. That's going to give us a positive answer. So what can we say about the shape of the graph with these pieces of information? Well, if just less than 8 is negative on the graph, the graph's going downhill, we already know it's stationary when x is 8, and if the graph, if the gradient of the graph is positive just to the right of 8, for num values of x just greater than 8, the gradient's positive, the graph is going uphill. So x equals 8 gives a minimum value. So that's now been confirmed. And what is that minimum value? Well, we go to the formula for p and plug in the value of 8. So we'll get 2 times 8 plus 128 divided by 8. So that's 16 plus 16. That's 32. Required minimum is 32. So that's Mr. Corsi signing out and thanks for watching this video.